Ladies and gentlemen of the Congress, thank you for your interest. And I also wish to thank the organizers of the Congress for the invitation to present this, this study uh, by myself and my co-authors, authors, which was published recently. Here is where the study was published, the Journal of Psychology and Education, um, and it's freely available via ResearchGate, for example. And as you can see by the study, we were interested in exploring uh, levels of discomfort and whether in uh, university students who, who were studying for a nursing degree and also if any of these students were actually experiencing visual stress while in their lecture theatres or classrooms. Thus the study was conducted in the usual uh, lecture rooms that the students attend. This excerpt from the, the method is here because it shows the fundamentals of the investigation in just one sentence. Um, for those of you who are not sure, uh, the text was read on two types of paper, a, a sample of, of reading text, um, and contemporary ultra white paper is basically today's extremely white paper, which is used um, universally. And they compared reading on the standard paper to reading on a less bright paper, approximately the, the color of the background here. And this was a, a beige colored paper. To separate the effects of the illumination brightness from the brightness of the standard paper, the study was carried out in two rooms with different illuminations. One with 600 lux, which is moderate illumination as many rooms have 900 lux or higher. And the second part of the study was carried out um, in a room with less illumination, only 400 lux. And for, excuse me, for instruments, they were quite inexpensive. We had two, one newspaper article that was very interesting, typed onto two um, pieces of paper, one being the, the ultra white paper that's widely in use today. And the other identical sample of text was on the beige colored paper. I have not included the uh, actual text as it would be too small to see. Um, the X's I've put here are merely examples of um, how the text was retyped by us. Um, it was in standard size 12 font times New Roman and um, the only alteration was that we used normal text, bold text in some parts, italic text in, in, in some sentences, and also a few combinations of these. The students were given a reading comfort questionnaire um, and asked to rate um, the, the levels to which they might experience any of these six symptoms of visual stress or, or visual discomfort. These are uh, classic indicators of visual discomfort, which are usually reported by people with visual stress. Um, the rating web, um, range was from zero to five, with zero being nothing, none, they do not experience that symptom. 
three being quite noticeable and five being highly noticeable, it causes difficulty to re reading. Um, and the students are asked to look at each symptom individually and then read at least part of the text and consider if they experienced, in, in this case, for example, symptom one was discomfort due to the brightness of the page. Then they would rate between zero and five if, if they experienced it and to what level. Then they would um, read a few paragraphs of text on the base colored paper and do the same again. Um, it was quite simple, and at the end, when we collected the data, we um, added a seventh measure, which was we called the total discomfort score, and that was merely the total scores in each, for each of these symptoms, and we compared the total discomfort uh, for the six symptoms under white paper and the total discomfort um, and when reading from the beige paper. Now, sorry, I need a sip of water. Before moving to the results of the study, I, I should explain the underlying, underlying reasons behind it. Um, we were concerned about the effects of fluorescent lighting on some students um, because there are three widely reported issues with fluorescent lighting and have been for many decades. As you can see, these are just examples of the many studies that have reported on each of these aspects of fluorescent lighting. And um, our study investigated the first two, the spectrum of the lighting or color balance and the amount of lighting. Um, the third factor we did not endeavor to include because assessing three factors simultaneously in one study was, was, would have been quite complicated. So I'll explain the two aspects that this study explored. In the third aspect, the flickering of fluorescent lighting and also nowadays LED lighting. Um, um, I will leave to uh, Professor Arnold Wilkins, who I know is speaking at this at this Congress because he is um, the world's expert when it, when it, um, concerning the flickering of illumination. So there is one other factor which has complicated all of this and, and is the reason, one reason we included the, the less bright beige colored paper. It is because today's printing paper, which our manufacturers call ultra white is much brighter and much wider than any paper previously in history. Um, excuse me. Um, the the um, problem is that we believe that the paper currently widely in use in most schools and universities and in society um, may be compounding the effects of the three issues with fluorescent lighting that I showed you. It's because uh, under fluorescent lighting, which emits a, a component of ultraviolet light, uh, ultra white paper actually captures the ultraviolet light. And also if the, from window light or daylight, which contains ultraviolet light, and then re-emits it as fluorescence back to the reader's eyes. And this is not only additional light, 
is also light that the chemicals are designed to emit fluoresce um, um, falling in the blue band of the spectrum. Um, specifically this area, which is an, the paper manufacturers are aware is the, the part of the visual spectrum where human sensitivity is much, much higher. Um, I won't go into the details, we don't have time, but added blue light um, actually tricks the human visual system or the brain into perceiving more whiteness and more brightness. And just briefly, if I go back, this is the reason that fluorescent lighting with this unnatural spectrum has concentrated most of its emissions in, in the same area, short wavelength blue light. Um, and as you can see, the spectrum here is uh, uh, totally unnatural compared to the sunlight in the background and incandescent lighting, including halogen. Now, the results of the study, so checking the time, sorry, um, are here. It was in two parts. So first part we called study one, and this is where the students actually um, carried out the experiment under uh, moderate fluorescent lighting, levels of fluorescent lighting. Here are the six symptoms in the, in the questionnaire. Uh, if you're interested, they're much easier to read here. Um, here are the scores. However, I should point out that uh, I, since I presented some preliminary findings from our study at the conference last year, we have since uh, uh, increased the robustness of the statistical analysis by using the Wilcox and signed ranks test. And however, this means that we have median scores here instead of means, which I much prefer and they can be misleading. Um, and however, the statistical score, the Z score, instead of a T score, um, showed that five of the six symptoms and the total discomfort score all reduced significantly under the same lighting when the students compared reading the same text from the non-white paper. Excuse me again. Um, as I said, the, the symptoms were rated from zero to five. So the total discomfort score was between zero and 30. As for study two, the second component of our study, the group was slightly smaller. Um, the, the scores were lower under the lower illumination, which shows an, an effect. And however, two of the symptoms um, reduced, symptom levels reduced even further under the lower illumination when the students turned to the beige colored paper. And likewise, the total discomfort scores under the 600 lux, it was nine, here it is six, but when comparing to the base cold paper, it was two, and this was the difference was also significant. Whoops. So the key findings: twenty-eight percent of the nursing students under the um, brighter illumination scored fifteen or more or higher on the total discomfort scale which is from 1 to 30. So th these are moderate levels of visual discomfort bordering on what could be termed visual stress. However, 14% of the group scored between 20 
and 25 on the discomfort scale with a maximum of 30. And, and here I've inserted, we had a pilot study before the actual study and there were, we compared the, the same um, assessment with a group um, diagnosed with visual stress and a group of controls. And in our pilot study, the, the diagnosed visual stress group had a mean score of 21.7. As you can see, the, the, these future nurses, 14% or one in seven of them, had scores in the same range or even higher. This suggests that these people uh, um, are almost definitely have visual stress, but have not been diagnosed. As you saw in the table, excuse me for drinking water, dry throat. Um, the five of the six symptoms reduced um, when viewing the base covered paper, plus the total score. And as you already know, the total score um, reduced from nine with the white paper to three with the beige paper, which was highly significant. Um, now, the reason I've put this statement here is because the 14% of a non clinical group of university students who are, um, are capable readers. Um, agrees with the findings of um, several other studies that, that indicated that visual stress probably affects 12 to 14 percent of normal readers. I, sh I should say moderate levels of visual stress. Um, severe levels of visual stress affect perhaps 5 percent of the population, general population. Okay, now for the the key findings of study two, um, the, line, the discomfort levels were lower under less lighting, which we, we expected. Still, 24% of the students scored 10 or, or higher on the discomfort scale, total discomfort scale of one to 30. And 8% of the second group of these future nurses um, scored from 20 to 24, which also compares with the visual stress group's score, mean score of 21.7. Um, as you know, only two symptoms um, were reduced in severity when reading from the beige colored paper, plus the total score. So the illumination appears to be a big factor, the, the amount of illumination, but also the brightness of the reading material is also a factor. Okay, um, so what does this mean? Well, the study shows that visual stress is not confined to people with reading deficits or severe reading deficits, as these students were at university, if, um, which suggests they are capable readers. And, um, previous studies that I have done have, have found the, same, the presence of visual stress in in proficient readers who are PhD students and academics, lecturers. And we speculate that the findings go beyond the classroom. For example, these nurses will one day be medical professionals in highly illuminated hospital settings working under high stress. And lastly, um, I, this is purely uh, contextual by me. Um, 
it, it seems that the increased reporting of learning disorders in the last 30 years fits very well with the increased levels of brightness in the illumination and the reading material. Perhaps it is coincidence, but to me, it's, it's, um, suggests something. Okay, I've gone over time, I think. I'm just checking the time. Um, now, the implications for healthcare and health are here. Obviously, the excessive blue light or added blue light from fluorescent lighting and now the paper is, is not good for um, the retina. It can cause fatigue, cognitive fatigue. Excuse me, as well as hyperactivity, anxiety, and of course, it's really bad for people susceptible to physical stress, such as myself, which is the reason I'm wearing tinted glasses, coloured glasses. Um, and this is pure pure speculation, but uh, the British Medical Journal released a a, a, a Medscape alert. Um, with, uh, following their study, which showed that in the USA, med preventable medical errors in hospitals um, is responsible for 251,000 deaths, the third leading cause of death. And an earlier study showed something similar. In Australia, the Australian uh, government commissioned a, a very large study of medical errors in hospitals 20 years ago, and they found the same thing, 14,000, oh, well, they found that it was the third leading cause of death, 14,000 in Australia is 11% of all deaths, or about one in nine, except these are medical errors that should not have happened. Of course, errors happen in hospitals, but these were entirely preventable, such as misreading the patient's uh, chart or misreading um, or not seeing a decimal point on the amount of a, of a drug that should be given. So again, some contextual, some speculation um, by myself. This is purely uh, speculation. Um, I can't help considering what if Visual stress is a factor in only 1% of hospital errors. It's just a thought, but if it were the case, it would mean in the USA 2,500 deaths, um, avoidable deaths in hospitals um, <clears throat> may have had visual stress as a factor. I actually did some number crunching or calculations at my university, and also at um, the University of Oviedo in Spain, where I did part of my PhD, um, just to see what the cost savings would be if the universities adjusted their illumination to what um, expert government panels recommend for reading and learning. Because at, at the moment, they have two to four times more lighting than is recommended in lecture theatres and in classrooms and in schools, including primary schools. For example, at, at, at the University of New England, there are only 5,000 students on campus. Most students are external students working from home. And for these 5,000 students, there are 20,000 fluorescent tubes, 1.2 metre fluorescent tubes, I should say. Um, many years ago when I did this, uh, I calculated that just by cutting that in half, they would still be over the recommended um, uh, specifications for adequate lighting, but they would save a quarter of a million dollars a year and a thousand tonnes of CO2 emissions. <coughs> in Spain, it's similar. To, um, I'm not sure if all universities are the same, but there seems to be about four um, large fluorescent tubes or eight shorter ones for each student. Um, in Spain, they reduce the lighting hours because the 
the chancellor uh, said that it's ridiculous that we have 100 kilometers of lighting if all the tubes were put end to end. <laughs> and then now in Spain, the electricity cost has almost doubled, but back then in 2013, when I calculated this, 400,000 euros a year could be saved and 4,000 tons of CO2 per year. So it's a win-win-win situation if something is done about the excessive lighting and uh, preferably all, but also the unnecessary um, uh, fluorescent paper that we are using nowadays. Most people are quite happy to read a book which is cream white. Book publishers never use optical brightening um, uh, agents, these fluorescent chemicals, simply because they want to make it comfortable for their customers to read the book. However, to teach reading, we are giving young students in kindergarten blindingly white paper, which adds extra blue as well as illumination and visible light to the uh, over illumination with excessive blue from the lighting above. So they're, they're getting excessive light with excessive blue from above and more light and blue from below when they read. It's, um, it's really uh, something needs to be done about it and this is what I think. Um, future research, there's, there's so many possibilities. So I'll just leave you with this, this quote I borrowed from eminent researchers, Professor Arnold Wilkins and Bruce Evans, um, a statement they made when asked, what can we do to end the, um, when will the controversy surrounding visual stress finally end. So thank you.